previous video, we went through the ECG changes associated with LVH in some detail. In right ventricular hypertrophy, we would predict that the opposite process to LVH occurs with increasing rightward voltages generating abnormally large R waves in the right-sided chest leads and deep S waves in those on the left. While this pattern is seen, because of the dominance of the left ventricle in the formation of the QRS complex, the right ventricle has to enlarge to a very substantial degree to significantly alter QRS voltages in the chest leads. However, in the presence of gross RVH, when the RV wall has increased to at least twice its normal thickness, the depolarizing voltage generated in the enlarged right ventricular muscle mass can produce abnormally tall R waves in the right-sided chest leads and persistent large S waves in those on the left. In fact, an R wave in lead V1 higher than seven small squares in amplitude, as illustrated in the example shown here, is highly suggestive of the presence of underlying RVH. Equally, if the R wave in lead V1 is higher in amplitude than the S wave in that lead, this is also strongly suggestive of underlying hypertrophy. The ECG shown here is from a patient with chronic pulmonary hypertension. Again, we would invite you to stop the video at this point and analyze the changes present. You'll notice the prominent R waves in the right-sided chest leads and significant S wave activity in those on the left. When we examine lead V1, we find that the R wave is two large squares in amplitude, or 10 small squares, well above our limit of seven small squares. This is consistent with underlying RVH. You'll also notice the T wave and ST segment changes present in this example. The ST segments are depressed below the isoelectric line and the T waves are deeply inverted in the right precordial leads. These changes represent a right ventricular strain pattern secondary to hypertrophy and do not reflect any underlying acute ischemia. Before we move on, there is at least one further feature of interest on this ECG. Looking at the frontal leads, we note that lead 2 is isoelectric giving two possible cardiac axes at right angles to this lead. As lead 3 is strongly positive and AVL negative, option B must be correct. This is an example of RVH resulting in right axis deviation on the ECG. To complete our brief discussion of the ECG changes associated with RVH, it is worth mentioning that although there are other causes of a dominant R wave in lead V1 unrelated to hypertrophy, the V1 R wave voltage criteria we've just applied to this ECG have reasonable specificity. However, as for LVH, the sensitivity of the ECG in the diagnosis of RVH is poor. In fact, it is only possible to diagnose about one-fifth of RVH cases from ECG changes alone.